Now, at 24, our first guest this evening was the youngest ever chef to be awarded a Michelin star. Toby Hill has worked in some of the best kitchens in the UK over the last 15 years under chefs like Raymond Blanc and Gordon Ramsay and was also the youngest chef ever to achieve four AA rosettes, another prestigious hospitality award. Toby's stellar career now helps him train the next generation of chefs at Aylesbury College in Buckinghamshire, which is where he first learnt to cook. Toby, thank you so much for coming in. It's great Pleasure. to meet you. Pleasure. Um, now, I'm a keen cook myself. So I'm looking forward to learning from you. What are you going to do for us today? Well, what, what we're going to do now, we're going to do a tartan of apples. OK. All right. Little brief history of the tartan. Uh, invented by the tartan sisters. Yeah. Um, one of them, unfortunately, dropped a normal apple tart one night and, uh, and she shoved all the apples back into the pan. Right. Covered it with pastry and recooked it. Turned it out. Therefore, tartar tan. Fantastic. OK, brilliant. Okay. So that's uh, originated as an accident, really, I suppose. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I'm a firm believer that a lot of the, uh, the best dishes in the world, they are actually accidents. You know, they're <laughs> yeah. just experiments or accidents. A lot of my cooking accidents don't taste very good, so I'm sure it doesn't always work. <laughs> uh, so, uh, show us how... What, what are we doing, first of all? What we're going to do, we're going to use... This is a copper pan, obviously. Um, it's... As long as it's, a, like, a heavy-based pan, stainless yeah. steel, or, or a deep, non-stick pan, that's fine. Unsalted butter, we're just going to smooth that into the bottom of the pan. Make sure it's nice and even. So you want some kind of a level, so even all the, all the way across the That's right, the yeah, and it, as we do the recipe, it'll become clear why. OK. Because um, we want it all to melt, basically, and caramelise all at the same time. OK. okay? So then we're going to add the caster sugar. Does it have to be caster sugar? Preferably, yeah. A granulated, it tends to, tends to crystallise a bit too much. Right. Um, so, like I said, butter's in there, sugar's in there. Now what we're going to do... 150 grams of butter, you said, didn't you? And caster sugar? Uh, 100 grams of caster sugar. 100 grams sugar. of caster yeah. sugar. Yeah. So what we're going to do, I'm actually using Braeburns tonight, actually. OK. Um, the reason I use those, they're a good all-rounder. They're not very acidic. Um, they've got a good balance. And they also, they hold their shape at, at the temperatures that we're going to be using, which is going to be about 180 degrees with okay. the caramel. And how have you, how have you uh, prepared those? In quarters, is it? Yeah, all I've done is peeled and, and quartered them. OK. And then it looks like there's slightly too many in there. Um, but as we cook it, the water's going to come out. Um, and obviously, they'll lose some of the volume. OK. OK, fine. So, next bit we're going to do, roll out the puff pastry. Yeah. Um, this is convenience puff pastry. Um, try and make sure it's all, uh, all butter puff pastry. Right. OK. Then it will just be even more of a heart attack. OK, but it... <laughs> it's very... <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah, um, that's right. But I, and I can just use pastry that I buy from the supermarket. I don't have to make my own pastry because no, I, I can't do that. No, no, no. It's not... I mean, puff pastry, I don't know if you know, but it takes, uh, well up to three days to make. Right. So many different turns, so many rests. Obviously, in a professional kitchen, we have a, a pastry team. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're sort of well-versed in it, you know, and it's... It, but, to be honest, for, the, for your home cook, it's not worth it. Just yeah. buy it. OK, my pastry team are useless at home anyway, so I probably will just buy it. <laughs> um, right, so you're rolling it out. Does it matter how thick you roll it out? What, you're about half... What, about half millimetres a, there? Yeah, yeah, but no more than half a centimetre, okay. that's what you want. OK? And then another little trick, what you want to do... Just put your pan on the top. OK. All Literally right. on top of the pastry. Literally on top of the pastry. Obviously, hope, hopefully, the bottom of the pan's clean. <laughs> yeah. And then just cut round, leaving about two inches around the outside. OK. And this, it's important, this bit, because it, it forms the actual sort of crust that goes around. And I have been told that it's the best bit. Lovely. So, yeah, I, I love a bit of pastry. And it, it's, it's almost like a sweet, isn't it? In fact, a baklava is pastry, basically. Lots of Absol yeah. cultures around Absolutely, the world just eat pastry. Absolutely, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is a, another important bit here. In order to get that nice crust around the uh -huh. edge, what we want to do is tuck it under the apples with the end of the spoon yeah. and then just press the apples back down. And what that does is it just secures the pastry in place while, you, while we're actually cooking it. Otherwise, what we'll do, it, it will shrink and, and rise up above the apples. So you're literally tucking the apples in like you'd tuck a child in, in at uh, night time? Absolutely. I don't know if they prefer this, but... Uh... I don't know. It's always worth a try if you have kids, <laughs> tucking in with, uh, with pastry and apples. It's right. <laughs> only help them sleep anyway. <laughs> that's right. OK, so that's all tucked under there now. Yeah. Nice and neatly. Now what we're going to do... Just give this a little wipe here. Now what we want to do now is caramelise this or start cooking it. So we've done all of that in the cold pan. Mm -hmm. We're now going to put it on, a very, on top heat, number six on, uh, on, on, uh, on this electric hob. And what's going to happen is the butter's going to melt, sugar's going to drop into the butter, 
and it's going to slowly caramelise. Yeah. Um, and like I said, we want to do that as quickly as possible, otherwise it will actually crystallise. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And it's literally caramel. That's what. That's all caramel that's is. Right. Melted yeah. sugar. That's right. It works really like toffee. Yeah. You know, literally butter and, oh, and, and, and sugar. And what we're going to be watching out for when when we come back a bit later is just that bubble up. Mm -hmm. Watch for the colour, and then we're going to pop it in the oven. Okay. How long are we going to leave it like that for? Take about eight nine minutes. Okay. Okay. Obviously, depending on the strength of your stove. Um, but like I said, I don't really think I've ever timed a recipe in my entire <laughs> life. So. All right. Well. Hopefully it'll be exactly the right time when we come back to you in a little while, Toby. We will be coming back to Toby over the course of the show to see how he's getting on. And, of course, later on we're going to be tasting that fabulous tart tatin. Here we are back with today's chef, though, Toby Hill. Now, Toby, uh, tart tatin of apples you're making with a jus as well. Last That's time it. we left you uh, with the apples and the sugar and the pastry all bubbling up in the frying pan. Where have we got to? That's it. Well, like, yeah, like I said, I mean, it's the, the, the butter's melted. The, the sugar's dropped down into the butter, actually. Um, that's all caramelised now. You can just see nice around the edges. Beautiful. Nice and golden. Um, and we've got that beautiful dough on there. You know, ideally, it won't happen every time, but if you can... It looks very it, pretty. That's very, it's very <laughs> impressive yeah. you've got it to so do that. Far, yeah, so far, so far. OK. Are okay. you going to put that in the oven, That's going to go in the oven. Obviously, watch your pan handle, yeah. oven gloves or a cloth. 180 degrees in the oven. OK, 180 degrees centigrade in there. Now, that's it. if I don't have a frying pan that can go straight in the oven, is there anywhere I can do it? I just need to get a metal metal handle frying pan. Well, I think, yeah, that's probably the best okay. thing. As long as the pan's deep and, like I said, thick-bottomed, yeah. we've got no problems See, with Well, this. I'm definitely thick-bottomed. OK, let's uh, uh, move on to the jus, then, which you've created especially for us at the loft, have you? Yeah, I have indeed. Um, I mean, it's literally, actually, just like a, a very fresh apple juice. What it adds to the dish is some acidity, so it makes it very refreshing. Because, like I said, it's uh, it's very heavy, very sweet, very yeah, buttery. Lovely. And it's not going to do any people on a diet any good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these are Granny Smiths. Again, I'm using these because they're acidic. All right, and we're just going to dice them up, pop them in a bowl. You could use anything uh, acidic with this dish. Maybe, you know, a fresh raspberry cooler if they're in season. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like, if we you can use seasonal ingredients, they're not only better in terms of flavour, but... They're generally cheaper. That's something that, that I know that you're quite big on, seasonality and, and locality of produce as well. Very much so. I mean, all the way through my career, uh, it's, it's been a real, real passion of mine. You know, and uh, it, I, I hate to see at the odd times of the year people buying strawberries from, you know, Africa or things. You yeah. know, our country's got so much to offer. Offer meat, fish. It's just fantastic at the moment. OK, so, fabulous. So, in season right now, apples, some yep. of them or not? Uh, Coxes. OK. Braeburns. Super. Um, Coxes, it was always something that Blanc preferred, um, okay. it, you know, because they were local. Yeah. Um, British and obviously had a lot of fruit, uh, a lot of acidity in them. Sure. Right, tell us what you're doing here. What I'm doing now, I'm using fresh vanilla. I'm just scraping the seeds out. You can use, uh, uh, you know, extract, but it's really, if you can get the fresh stuff, I mean, it can be used again and again. That pod now you could pop in with some sugar but in an airtight container and uh, you'd have vanilla sugar. All right, I'm just okay. going to sprinkle it with a little bit of icing sugar. Yeah. And what this will do is bring out the, the, the liquids, the moisture within the apple, and it will help it then re-soak all that flavour back up. Fantastic. And then I'm going to use a centrifuge juicer that we've got in front of you there. Um, I'm going to leave these for five minutes or so, all right, just for all those flavours to mingle. Yeah. And we're just going to pop it through, and what will come out is a, it's half liquid, uh, half apple froth. Lovely. OK, Toby, so we're going to leave that to uh, marinate for a little bit. So apples, vanilla, seeds and some icing sugar and we'll be back with Toby towards the end of the show to share uh, his food with all our guests. Unless it's really, really good, in which case I might have it all to myself. <laughs> How far have we got, Toby? There's nothing on the stove, nothing on here. I'm a bit no, worried. I've just put those through the, uh, through the centrifuge, OK, Ashley. so those were the apples literally... that you had marinating. Yep. I'll have and a smell of that. Smells fantastic, I must say. You really can't get any fresher than that. And now, here's the moment of truth. And there it is. That's okay. been in the oven for how long, would you say, roughly? Probably about 10, 10 minutes, ten 9, minutes? 10 okay. minutes. Uh, at the 180 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do, just loosen up the sides. Mm -hmm. Now, just to be doubly sure, I've got the, the stove here just on very, very low. Yeah. Um, and what I want to do is just, just bring it, the caramel just back to the boil. Okay. Um, what that does is if any caramel's set on the bottom, it will loosen up those apples. All right. Oh, because you're going to flip it over and otherwise they might stick. That's right. Got you, OK. And then, the moment of truth. <laughs> Again, be careful, guys, because this is very, very hot. Yeah, do remember as well, if you do try this uh, at home or, or in your kitchen, it's very, very hot pan because it's uh, been in the oven at 180, so do use oven gloves. 
There you wow, go. Wow, look at that. Superb. Look at it. And the smell, by the way, is fantastic as well. It's one of those moments when you really do need smell of vision. <laughs> they did try smell of vision in the 1970s, 80s, didn't they? But it didn't really work. I think it was called Aroma Cinema or something. <laughs> something like that. We'll ask uh, our film critic in a moment. Anyway. So what I'm going to, I mean, something this size, I mean, it's, it's more than enough for four. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to cut it up now. If you want to do bigger ones, I mean, you can go up to, I don't know, sizes for 20, 30. It's a bit like those paella, paella pans when you have something that <laughs> yeah. big. OK, so let's uh, put some of those on those plates. We're going to take those over now and see what all our guests have got. Now, do be careful, as I said, it's really hot, isn't it? The caramel it's very, very melted hot. sugar is, is really, really hot. I have got clean hands. And you've got asbestos fingers, because <laughs> you're a chef, of course, Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah, that's it. Um, any sort of tips for serving this, if we were going to serve it? Any sort of ways of making it well, look really pretty? Well, the only pretty? thing, it really, anything additional, uh, I mean, it would just go well with cream or maybe some vanilla ice cream, something okay. like that. Lovely. And there's our little fresh apple juice, adding a little bit of freshness and acidity. Beautiful. And there you go. Right, it smells good. It looks divine as well. And on those plates as well, of course, <laughs> chefs always have very clever plates that make things look good. Uh, Toby, it looks great. We're going to taste Thank it you. in just a moment. Let's take it over in a second to Frankie, uh, to Shay and to John and see what they have to say as well.